There's something mesmerizing about metal glowing in a forge. The heat, the sparks, the steady hammering. It feels ancient, almost instinctive, like tapping into a craft humans have relied on for thousands of years. Even if you've only seen it in videos or movies, there's this sense that forging isn't just work, it's transformation. But forging isn't stuck in the past. It quietly supports modern life in ways most people never notice. The strong tools you use, the engine parts in your car, even critical components inside airplanes. Many of them exist because forging makes them tougher, safer, and more reliable. So in this deep dive into what really is forging, we're breaking down how this old school process still shapes the world today, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the simplest explanation. Forging is the process of shaping metal using compressive force. That's it. No magic, no overly complicated theory, just pressure, lots of pressure. In ancient times, that force came from a hammer and the muscular arm of a blacksmith. Today, it often comes from massive hydraulic presses, mechanical hammers, or industrial rollers that can generate thousands of tons of force. But the idea remains the same. Take metal, squeeze it, and shape it into something useful. Unlike casting, where metal is melted and poured into a mold, forging keeps the metal mostly solid. Instead of turning it into a liquid, forging changes its shape by squishing it. This does something incredibly important. It rearranges the metal's internal grain structure, making it tougher and more reliable. Think of it like kneading dough. The more you work it, the more uniform and stronger it becomes. That's why forge parts are used in places where you cannot afford failure. Engines, aircraft landing gear, high strength tools, and heavy machinery. So at its core, forging is simple. Push metal hard enough and it transforms. Forging might sound high tech today, but it's one of humanity's oldest metalworking techniques. It traces back over 6,000 years when early blacksmiths discovered that heating metal and hammering it made it stronger and easier to shape. These early smiths created everything from knives and armor to farming tools and horseshoes. A blacksmith wasn't just someone who worked with metal, they were the town's problem solver, engineer, and weapon maker all at once. As time went on, forging evolved. The invention of water-powered hammers in the Middle Ages allowed smiths to produce larger, more consistent pieces. By the Industrial Revolution, steam-driven forging hammers made it possible to mass-produce parts with strength no other method could match. Fast forward to today, and forging can be done in facilities with machines powerful enough to shape steel blocks the size of cars. Aircraft companies, car manufacturers, and even NASA depend on forge components to ensure safety and performance. But even with all the technology, the heart of forging remains close to its roots. Heat, force, and the mastery of shaping metal. Forging isn't just one method. In fact, it comes in three major categories, and they all affect the metal differently. Hot forging. This is the classic approach, heating metal until it glows bright orange before shaping it. At high temperatures, metal becomes much more malleable, reducing the force required and making it easier to create complex shapes. Hot forging is perfect for large or intricate parts like gears, crankshafts, and tools. Warm forging. This one sits right in the middle. The metal is heated, but not as much as in hot forging. You get a balance. Better material strength than hot forging, but easier shaping compared to cold forging. 
Many automotive components use this method because it boosts both efficiency and durability. Cold forging. This method happens at room temperature. The metal is not heated at all. Instead, it's forced into a shape while solid and cold. Because the metal resists deformation, it becomes incredibly strong. Bolts, screws, nuts, and small precision parts often come from cold forging. It gives them high strength, tight tolerances, and excellent surface finish. Three methods, each with its own advantages, but together they form the backbone of modern metal manufacturing. Forging starts with a solid piece of metal, usually a bar or billet. For hot forging, the metal is heated until it glows, then placed between two dies that shape it under massive pressure. Each strike from a hammer or press forces the metal to flow into the die, forming the final piece. After shaping, it's cooled, cleaned, trimmed, and sometimes heat treated to boost strength. What makes forging unique is what happens inside the metal. As it's compressed, the grain structure aligns with the new shape, giving the part toughness and resistance to cracking. It becomes strong not just on the surface, but all the way through. That's why forged parts show up everywhere. In cars, Components like crankshafts, gears, and steering parts are often forged because they deal with intense stress. Quality tools, wrenches, pliers, hammers, are typically forged too, which is why they feel solid and last for years. Even aircraft rely on forging for critical components like landing gear and engine parts, where failure simply isn't an option and the heavy-duty bolts used in bridges, skyscrapers, and machinery, many of those are forged as well. Forging may not be flashy, but it quietly strengthens the modern world from the inside out. Forging is one of those ancient technologies that never fell out of style because it simply works. It evolved, scaled up, and adapted, but the principle stayed the same. Heat metal, apply force, shape it into something better. So the next time you hold a tool, use your car or board a plane. Remember, there might be a forged part quietly doing its job, built using a method that humans mastered thousands of years ago. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.